be followed? No. I'm alone. Good. We have to work fast. Here are two tickets to the Russian ballet. You're going under the alias Nigel Winthrop. You're a textile manufacturer from Manchester. During the intermission, get up, go to the second floor, access the service closet next to the women's restroom. There you'll find a case with an M24 sniper rifle. Climb the ladder, remove the panel, you'll have access to the entire auditorium. This is our Mark. He'll be seated in seat C12. His name is Benedict Umbridge. Your bullets have been covered in a fast-acting poison, so even a non-lethal hit will kill him. Clive, I can't go through with this. This plan has been painstakingly crafted I know for the. It's a great plan. It's just I've been reading this book recently. On the Metaphysical Elements of Ethics by Immanuel Kant. I got it at the bargain bin at Barney's Book Boutique. I didn't know what to make of it at first. I mostly bought it because I wanted to impress the ladies that I bring back to my place. But then one day, I cracked it open and I started to read it. And it blew my fuck. Mind. What? what? What are you talking about? I mean, I had to start rethinking everything I was doing. I mean, murdering people for money, it's just wrong. Okay, is this some sort of a midlife crisis kind of a thing? No, no, no. I'm violating many categorical imperatives by killing people for financial gain. Explain. There are moral maxims that have a universality to them. And it's wrong to violate those principles, regardless of the specific physical details surrounding those moral predicaments. So, murder is wrong regardless of the circumstance of the action? I think so, although this cop fellow is really long-winded. I thought you were a hedonistic egotist. I was, until I started realizing how my actions affected society and others, and how, without a strict moral compass, I was in danger of really destroying my soul. There are absolute moral duties. So, don't you run into problems when these absolute moral duties conflict with their own pragmatic application? Like how? You'd agree that under Kant's philosophy, lying is morally a sin, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's suppose you're confronted with a murderer who's looking for a child and asks you where the child is. Now, if you lie, according to Kant, you're committing a moral sin. But if you tell the truth, your actions are contributing to the death of an innocent child. That is a pickle. And if you heard what Kant had to say about masturbation, you'd drop him like a hot heap of hand lotion. So you're saying that by taking out this Benedict guy, I could be stopping the next Hitler? Well, I don't know about all that. I mean, these well, words come to me through a Jeffrey's tube through the floor of my office, and who knows where that tube leads. I'm saying holding on to an outdated ethical system like this in today's heterogeneous society ultimately leads to moral paradoxes. Well, I guess you're right. The only way to survive with any sort of ethical balance in today's chaotic world is to maximize pleasure while not detracting from the overall happiness of the community. I mean, you enjoy the money that you make uh, for the work that you do. No, no, no. The money is very nice. It buys me a lot of cool shit. So killing one guy who might be the next Hitler, we don't know. Yeah. And d that doesn't distract from the happiness of the community as a whole, right? No, it doesn't. There you go. So I want you to take these tickets. I want you to go to the ballet. Do your job. You're right. I'm going to do my job. boy. Except for the fact I didn't come to get information about a hit. I came to do a hit. Oh, did I ever tell you about Jürgen Habermas's theory on discourse ethics?